okay good so let's first get this optionistics view so we have this uh, one free website where we can get a lot of eyeball and uh, eyeball data for individual US equity tickers okay so you see here we have uh, a fair bit of data at least much more than one year okay so you have the QQQ okay and the eyeball for the QQQ okay which you can see on your uh, the ticker what is the ticker VXN VXN is actually for the Nasdaq index but since the triple Q tracks the Nasdaq index effectively you can say the VXN is the eyeball plot for the for options on the triple Q okay so in this exam in this uh, recording we want to understand what eyeball is and what H ball is okay all right so first what is eyeball let's try to understand what is eyeball let's first understand mechanically okay and then we should understand eyeball at two levels one is mechanical and one is intuitive intuitively we have to understand and interestingly enough you you won't find this intuitive definition of eyeball in any book it's very difficult to find mechanical uh, calculation mechanical answer is uh, available okay so let's look at the mechanical answer first what is eyeball let's look at a option price calculator okay so this the market will call this the industry calls it an option pricing model but actually we should call it an option valuation model okay because it's a fair value model you don't need actually you don't need a model to price it pricing is done in the market by interaction of demand and supply okay so the terminology is not correct but you have to get used to it because in industry people call it an option pricing model okay so here you have all these inputs and then you have these outputs really you have a call option output and this you should remember that the put option value is derived from this relationship it's a, a no arbitrage relationship between call and put prices so that's put call parity yes. so using that you derive the put option mm -hmm. okay so these are your outputs essentially or let's say, say we have only one output which is the call option yes. okay now uh, so here are your inputs now you have all this now you find let's say this is an OVM okay option valuation model the output of this model is a fair value yes. okay what should be the fair value of the option price so what this model is telling you is that these are the values of the inputs then according to this model the fair value of the output is this the fair value of the call option is three dollars roughly but if you look at the market you find let's say for an example uh, just for example you find that the mark call option is trading at five dollars so obviously this this can easily happen right uh, where the market price is different from the fair value estimate because the fair value estimate is just a, is based on a bunch of assumptions okay and the most critical assumption here is the assumption about the vol okay because these things there can't be any confusion about everyone knows what the underlying is everyone knows how many days to expiration so the confusion is the difference of opinion is only likely to arise from this so we assume that the market when it's arriving at that price of five dollars okay is also using this kind of an option valuation model so therefore the only reason that the market's estimate of the price which is five dollars is different from your fair value estimate is because there are different assumptions about the vol input okay so obviously uh, your vol input was 25 it gave you a price of three dollars okay and if the options price is five dollars then uh, do you think the option is using a higher vol input or a lower vol input so higher volume. higher input okay so they can be whatever using so so now the first question the exercise now that we are going to do is we observe that the market price is five dollars okay. and we based on the inputs we entered into our fair value model okay. we find that output of fair value output is three dollars roughly okay. so now we want to ask ourselves now what should be the and we know that the difference can only be due to differences in the ball estimate yes. okay so now what we want to ask ourselves is what value should I enter for the vol estimate in order to give me a fair value output from the OVM which is exactly equal to the market price this is clear this is the exercise we are doing okay now what you have to do is you have to do and we've done this in the class I, I'm pretty sure I think I've done it in the class but anyway we'll do it again so you, as you said we obviously the if the market price of the call is five dollars when the fair value is three dollars that means the ball estimate of 25 in the fair value model needs to be increased okay so let's randomly increase it to 35 okay see what happens oh it's only four dollars not good Sir, enough I can also apply scenario manager over here like you can scenario do what? manager 
like I'll in Excel if I'll be putting that value to five dollar. Yeah. So like by changing the volatility, it will come. Uh, the amount of volatility will automatically be taken. No, no. Are you one one? Let me just finish the calculation. Let me explain to you first. You have to understand what uh, the certain aspects about the mechanical understanding of eyeball. If you're talking about scenario manager, I've not used that. I mean, are you talking about a uh, display for different values of? No, 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 sir. It okay, we'll talk about that later. We'll talk about. Uh, no need to worry about Excel at this point. Okay, okay. let's just get the concepts right first. Okay, so I increased it to forty-five. Now that's too much. It's going above five dollars. Okay, so let's make it forty-two. Okay, it's a little closer. So maybe if I make it forty-three. Uh, is closer so maybe i should actually make it 42.5 uh, now it's much closer so i should make it maybe 42.4 now it's exactly five okay so if you saw the process that i went through this is an iterative process right okay so the first thing you have to understand about eyeball and the mechanical aspects of eyeball is that you can't actually just because see normally when we have a equation i x is equal to k plus l if I write x is equal to k plus l, and then I ask you to say, the, then I ask you to tell me, okay, then what is l? So if x is equal to k plus l, that means l is equal to x minus k. Okay. So this is what is in mathematics is called an analytic. I've given you a very simple example, but this is called a analytic solution where you just, uh, you know, cross multiply, interchange the terms. Okay. Then you get the solution. Okay. This is an analytic solution. Now, what I did here is not like that. You notice, yes, sir. although I had a value of the output, yes. okay, and I had a desired value of the output should have been, I should set the output equal to five. Yes. Then I should be able to solve for the input. Yes. But in the case of eyeball, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that this is not eyeball is such a calculation where you cannot solve analytically for the correct value of eyeball which will give the same input uh, same output from the OVM as the market price okay, okay. do you remember any other calculation from your corporate finance analysis what you did in FM1 and FM2 do you remember any other calculation which you have covered in finance which has this kind of characteristic where there is no analytic solution you have to you calculated something which is such a thing that it cannot be calculated in an analytic way you know now you understand what is an analytic solution yes. can you tell me what you have done what else you've done where there is no analytic solution you have to the other way to solve in mathematics is what is called by iterative approximation you saw what i did just now yes. i took 25 yes. i increased to 35 not good enough increased to 45 too much brought it down to 42.3 then 42.2 so on and so forth and finally i came to the solution yes. trial and error trial and okay so can you tell me uh, some other uh, figure that you have calculated in finance which is also which also has to be calculated by this iterative approximation method and cannot be calculated by analytics through an analytic solution you remember is my question clear yes sir, question yeah is clear. yeah so what is it i don't exactly remember in finance but i remember like in bond we have done something like that like what putting uh, Something else which you have calculated, which can only be calculated. Okay, so I'll give you the answer. The answer is IRR. Okay, yes, sir. IRR also, although you know the IRR equation, okay, you put the okay, you can just take it also as the bond YTM equation, as you know, bond YTM and project IRR are mathematically the same thing, okay. So, IRR is also another thing and therefore YTM also is another thing. So, these are the two other items, bond YTM and bond uh, project IRR, which are mathematically equivalent, okay. These two also cannot be calculated analytically because everything else is known in project, I mean, it's not known, but projects you're in a project, you're estimating the cash flows. But once you have estimated the cash flows, you can, uh, you put it into the figure, your model, you put the estimate, uh, the project cost is known and you have made an estimate for the uh, yes. your uh, cost of capital etc in this case you have to look at the uh, in this case the cost of the the r the discount rate is what you're trying to find out okay irr you cannot find it analytically yes. it has to be done by trial and error iterative yes. approximation so mechanically eyeball has this property okay? okay you cannot analytically solve for but so we found that this is the eyeball so what is the eyeball then therefore this is why i said this is why your notes this part has this part 
that it is now you see what I've written here makes sense I wall is that wall input in the OVM which makes the OVM throw out a fair value for the option that is exactly equal to the market price for the option is this clear it's a long definition but it has to be accurate that's why it is long okay is this clear okay that's why I have said again making you repeat that logic so that you know how to use the language properly eyeball is a species of wall input into an OVM okay you saw that we were throwing in various wall inputs and for each wall input the OVM was giving me an output but those outputs were not equal to the market price but those are still valid OVM outputs okay so that's why I say that eyeball is a species of wall input into an OVM remember contract is a species of agreement okay so all contracts are agreements but all agreements are not contracts okay so all eyeballs are wall inputs into a OVM but all wall inputs into an OVM are not eyeball eyeball is only that wall input which will give you an output equal to the market price is this clear so this kind of conceptual understanding should be there of eyeball then intuitive answer of eyeball okay try to understand the intuitive meaning so mechanically you have understood what eyeball is now and again so so understand this now so we can just bridge segue into the intuitive answer okay now intuitively what are we saying if we say that with these kinds of inputs these are the outputs thrown out by the OVM here these are easy to understand we are expecting a 1% dividend over this period okay now this 42.4 what does this really mean it may and remember now that we have set the I this actually this wall input is actually the eyeball itself this wall input is the eyeball itself okay which means that if the market is using this kind of same option pricing model okay then the markets input for the ball in this OVM is 42.4 which means what the market is saying is that over this period okay we are expecting H fall equal to 42.4 okay which means that the market is predicting that over the next 30 days okay the market price will move in such a way that if you step in a time machine and jump forward 30 days from today okay and then you look back at the previous 30 days of price action which you have no idea about today yes. okay but if you get in a time machine jump forward 30 days and then look back on the previous 30 days mm -hmm. in this case 30 days is for one month and we can let 20 trading days or whatever okay let's assume that it's 30 days mm -hmm. so you look back you will jump forward 30 days then look back on the actual prices recorded over the next 30 days uh, over the previous 30 days okay which is from today to the forward point where you jumped okay and that period you will then do the H fall calculation which is given in your Hull Basu book which is the standard way of doing H fall calculation in your uh, you see uh, so if you see here yeah there is a calculation of H fall which is given here in page uh, on page for 353 of HP of Halbasu you can see that but there is a standard way of calculating H fall okay you first set up your data series which is the price history as a time series you take the second column will be the price relatives okay that is PT plus 1 by divided by PT okay then in the third column you take the natural logarithms of the price series so you get a natural logarithm series UI okay then you take this okay then you follow these steps okay take the standard deviation then multiply it by the square root of time etc okay they use these uh, perform these uh, calculations okay now then you come to a wall estimate okay so this wall estimate that you come to here this is 19.3 okay which as i explained to you is the one standard deviation price change that we are expecting which means if the price today is say hundred dollars then we are expecting roughly 119 that two-thirds of the time the price will remain one year in one year from now the price will be between 119.3 okay. 
and about eighty dollars. Okay, eighty one dollars. Okay, on the downside. So nineteen percent. So this is the one s one. The the H fall estimate is the one standard deviation price change. Okay, and this is how the H fall is calculated. Okay, so essentially when you go back to this calculation of H fall, that means what the market is saying at this point when it puts in an eyeball figure of when it gives you an eyeball of forty two point four. That means the market is expecting. This exactly. This is what intuitively it means that it is the option market's estimate of the future value of H fall that will be recorded at the end of this period, whatever this period is, 30 day, 90 day, 100 day, whatever. Okay, so that is how it is. So we should write it down here. That uh, we should go. We have to go up a little bit. <laughs> okay, so what we should write down here is that eyeball is the option market's view on future readings of eyeball. Okay, that is example of a thirty day option. Okay, okay. If uh, eyeball is, we take the example that we gave. If uh, eyeball is, if eyeball, <coughs> is 42.4 percent okay then option market thinks okay based on prices available in the option market that's why we say the option market thinks now the option market could be wrong okay the option market thinks that if you let me just give you the screwed uh, explanation that i gave but i think it gives you a picture of what is meant what the option market is actually saying that if you jump in a time machine and if we write it like this okay let's make it a little bit more elegant okay that if you took a h fall reading okay calculated as given below in hb okay so if you took a h fall reading means you have to take the reading according to the method mentioned in h was uh, uh, basu down uh, further down in the notes okay the proper way of taking h fall calculations if you took a h fall reading 30 days of the example we have taken 30 days from now okay that reading that reading would be 42.4 percent okay and that what is the meaning of h fall that we have already given downstairs i mean not downstairs but down below in the notes okay which is that it is the uh, one standard deviation price change okay over uh, based histor based on historical data based on historical h fall is always based on historical data it is the one standard deviation price change okay for uh, annual uh, for, for one year period okay which means that if you get a figure like 20 percent that means on average you would expect on two-thirds of the time the price whatever the price is the price is hundred dollars then two-thirds of the time one year from now the price should be trading between 120 and 80. that's what h fall means okay and therefore and what the market is saying what the option market is saying is if the eyeball is 42.4 that means 30 days from now if you took an h fall reading over 30 days of data over the previous 30 days of data then that that also i should clarify that if you took an h fall reading 30 days from now using 30 previous days of data okay that reading would be 42.4 percent okay for uh, from the calculator from the same daily data figure okay so this is what it means okay so this is the market's forecast of future h fall which can of course be wrong this is clear i mean it, i mean I, I shouldn't say it that way which could be wrong or it could be right but in general we do not have any a priori expectation that the market's forecast of future h fall will necessarily be correct 
we should be skeptical that this is just the market's forecast and we can test whether it turns out to be how how right is it or how wrong is it etc one minute one minute i think we can uh,